Yes, what is up everybody? Uh, pretty much immediately going live. Uh, I apologize about that, but we have a major computer uh, thing that went down this last week. So I don't have a laptop. Kim's laptop is about 20 years old. Uh, and so I'm having to use my edit computer, which also is barely working off to the side, like three feet away. So there was no warning about when we would go live. It literally is just, hi, we're live. Uh, so welcome everyone to Ginger Runner Live episode number 189 tonight. Pretty excited about this one. Mm -hmm. uh, she just finished the North Face 50 Miler Championships in San Francisco. First place, crushed everyone. It's amazing. We got to watch a video. Uh, Solomon did this fantastic live stream of yeah. uh, Ida Nielsen crossing the Golden Gate Bridge, finishing in first place. And it was really cool to watch this all play out live. But our guest tonight is Ida Nielsen, fresh off the big victory world championship. So I'm very excited about tonight's show. Uh, if you have questions, of course. Uh, I'll be in the chat room as usual, so please type your questions in. We'll be taking them throughout the show. And because I don't have my laptop, <laughs> I don't have an intro video. Normally I have the intro credits and stuff like that. Uh, so I think we're gonna try to do our best impression of the, of the credits, um, maybe just with like some silent dancing. <laughs> what is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live. Now we can actually start the show. I just stared at you. Yeah, all that time. was quite <laughs> awkward. Um, I am excited about tonight's show. We have one of the best trail runners right now on the planet uh, joining us for tonight's show. Uh, Ida Nielsen, who just completed the North Face 50 miler in first place, crushed the field, dominated. She's had a pretty incredible summer as well. And I, I want to talk to her all about her training, uh, what led up to this race what her plans are for future races in trail running. She's also a big mountaineer, skier, just a badass athlete all around. So we're gonna to talk to her a little bit about that. So without further ado, let's just get this. Oh, you know what? Before we even intro our guest, uh, there's some people that we have to thank, of course. Yes. Uh, it is the week of Thanksgiving. So thank you, first and foremost, for taking the time out of your busy evenings. Tuesday, it's not Monday, but yep. Tuesday, for joining it, uh, for taking the time to join us on tonight's show. It's, it's great to have you. And if you are watching live, of course, ask your questions of Ida and Kim or myself tonight in the chat room. Uh, but also uh, some individuals who help make Ginger Runner Live happen week after week, uh, supporting on Patreon at the top tier level. Brian Sands uh, ran his first marathon on October 8th, has now already signed up for his first ultra. We're gonna be following along with that journey. journey. Uh, mm -hmm. Brian has become a, a long time supporter of the show and it's awesome to have him on board. Rick Bjarnason uh, of Vancouver, well not Vancouver, but Columbia. I'm sorry, British Columbia. Uh, Canada. It's great to have him on board. He's hopefully going to be helping us design a brand new website, get that off the ground and running, because that thing is in desperate need of some updating. But Rick has been a supporter now for a couple of months. It's great to have him on board, as well as Chris Lee from Hong Kong. Chris Lee is uh, the founder and starter of Trailblazer, which is a really great organization over there where they're going to help uh, showcase what Hong Kong has to offer for trail running. They have some incredible trails, including they just did a hundred kilometer race uh, last mm -hmm. week, Chris and his whole team. It was awesome to follow along from afar. He just gave me a tour of their offices via video Skype. They have new offices over there that are gonna be incredible. People will be able to go visit, learn all about the Hong Kong trail scene. And uh, we'll be partnering up with them with some pretty cool things in the coming weeks and months. So uh, thank you, Chris Lee. Uh, okay. Great. So welcome everyone to episode number 189. I say we intro, uh, we intro this yes. guest because she doesn't have much time with us. We, we, we try to get to as many questions here uh, while, we'll ha while we have Ida Nielsen. So without any further ado, Ida Nielsen. Yay. Yes. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Uh, I, I terribly mispronounced it his name before. I'm probably doing it now. Uh, I apologize just in advance. Uh, I'm sure she's sitting here going, oh my God, that's not how my name is pronounced. No, but it's really good now. It's uh, close oh. enough. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting better, I'm, yeah. I'm practicing. <laughs> so the first question right off the bat, like our live viewers are gonna wonder, cause right now it's pitch black where we are yes. on the West Coast, which is where you just were. So where are you? Did you travel between the race and wherever you are now? Yeah, actually, I went uh, from San Francisco to Hawaii to Honolulu, so I'm spending a week here now. Um, a good uh, rest week, so that's really nice. That's awesome. Like we're jealous. We're, we're, <laughs> we're quite jealous, and I think you're doing it right. Win the championship, head to Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, that's that's pretty smart. And I have to say, every time we have a guest in from Hawaii, it worries us. It worries us only because the internet <laughs> is 
a little wishy-washy, but you seem to be coming in yeah. crystal clear. Yeah, I think it's good here, actually, yeah. That's great. Um, so first, let's let's talk a little bit about this most recent race, uh, the North Face 50 Miler. I love this race. It was my first ultra. Uh, it always seems to draw some of the biggest names in the sport. What drew you to this race? Because it's now your second time winning in a row. So what drew you to this event? Yeah, I really like the race also because yeah, it suits me as a runner. Like I like to go fast on some dirt trails, and I I love the the forest with the, the redwood forest. And yeah, it's a really a nice actually area to be so close to a big city. So mm. uh, yeah, last year I had a little bit uh, tougher preparation. I was uh, mainly skiing before, did some running and. Right. I had uh, some troubles early in the fall, so I had to cancel some races. So I really wanted to do a last race for the season last year. So um, then it was yeah nice to come over and do it. But uh, I was so sore afterwards because I didn't do much running before. So this year was much nicer, like a good preparation before and um, yeah, a good way to finish the season. Yeah, I mean, from what I read, right after Le Templier, you came to the States and hung out in Flagstaff, a good friend of ours, Alicia Vargo and that whole crew. It seems like you did a lot of good training in Flagstaff. Was that specifically for this race? Did you use that as preparation for this race? Yeah, it was really good actually because yeah, it's a lot of fast dry trails and that type of running you need for the uh, the North Face 50 and now in Norway it's really hard training. It's mm. starting to snow and uh, yeah, it, it's not that kind of trails you need to, to run on for this race. So um, that was really good. And I, I mean, I have to also commend you in that period while you're in Flagstaff. I know that you went under the previous rim to rim record in the Grand Canyon with with a whole group of people, including Alicia. What was that like? Was that did you set out to do that, or was that just a happy accident because everyone was moving well? What was the plan that day? No, the plan was to take the record, but uh, we were the three of us, so I. Uh... We just, uh, yeah, had a, a good pace and I pushed the pace. And then in the end, Alicia was the strongest one. So uh, it was really cool to do together. And also super nice to see the North Rim. i never been there before. And yeah. actually before I came, i never been running in Grand Canyon. Like I went to school at NIU, but at that time, it wasn't really the type of training I was doing. So oh, wow. yeah, yeah. So it was super cool to be running in the canyon and I enjoyed it a lot. So it was good. Yeah. And was that chosen specifically for the North Face preparation? No, it wasn't. It was just like, yeah, it's good to, to obvious to get a good uh, long training in, but I didn't really need that between Templiers and North Face. It was more to have the, when I was actually there to take the chance to do it. So Got it. Got it. We're going to talk a little bit more about what uh, Ida Dill did for training and stuff like that this whole year and, and her racing resume. But again, we are live. So Kim, what do you got? Yeah, this question from Kim Wrinkle in the chat room. Uh, what did you do for training and recovery between rim to rim and the North Face? So yeah, just dovetailing on that. Oh, uh, use the word uh, between the rim to rim and North Face. What did you did you taper? Did you do any sort of recovery after the rim to rim, or what? What did you do? Yeah, like um, yeah, off the rim to rim, I, I didn't do too much more training because. Yeah, the first week of the Templiers, I had a quite easy week, like traveling to, to Flagstaff. And then I did a good training week and yeah, a good 10 days, I would say, who kind of finished with the rim to rim. Hmm. And I felt that was the last a little bit harder. And yeah, I then I started to go down in training. I was still running and uh, yeah, I don't know what exactly I did. I think I did the peaks one day and I did some um yeah a short tempo run and yeah i just kept doing runs i guess yeah nothing so, like uh specific yeah yeah i like what i'm really fascinated by is you have a huge multi-sport background so you're i mean you skiing and mountaineering and, and the combo of the two do you have a preference one way or the other i mean i know that you went to nau and you also did cross country and you know all these other running events so was mm -hmm. there something or is there a sport that draws you more than the other or it, does it change and is it kind of organic as the season plays out 
yeah, I mean, I'm totally, I mean, a runner from the beginning. That's where I come from. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, like you said, I did track in cross country and some mm-hmm. shorter road races. And mm-hmm. uh, so I'm still like, I think, a runner in my heart and the ski mountaineering and uh, yeah, mountain um, and sky running is really new to me fi- still. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of like, yeah, my soul like moving into that more and more. And yeah, also the ski mountaineering first, I was like, oh, it's if I moved up north in Sweden and there is snow and it's something that is really nice to do in the winter and you can climb mountains then and go skiing. So, uh, I mean, I, I didn't ski as a kid and I was really bad. I'm still quite bad in the <laughs> downhills. <laughs> so um, it's... Um, but but it's a sport I I who's growing. I like it more and more, and now it feels like my second sport in the winter. And uh, we have a good group, like a, a good uh, group of uh, girls and women in Sweden who's uh, doing this sport. So, yeah, I like it a lot. I think this. I don't know if it's a trend or if it's it's been going on for as long as I've been in the sport. But I, I maybe you can speak a little bit to this those who have taken on some sort of winter sport or ski or ski mountaineering as an off season activity, everyone that I've talked to has reported that their running season tends to be better because they're not running through the winter and they're not constantly barraging their body with the running sort of exercise. As someone who has done collegiate cross country track and field has won multiple medals in that field. Do you notice now as you, as you do use the seasons to do different types of activity, does that help? one or the other, or do you do it only so you can take a break from one and give yourself a chance to do the other? Do you have any uh, thoughts on the balance of these two sports? No, I think it really, I mean, especially like when you do more races in the mountains, it's really, I mean, supplementing and helping that. Uh, yeah, but especially I can feel I'm super strong in the uphills in the beginning of the running season because of, yeah, you, you get really high VO2 max from the ski mountaineering and uh, right. climbing. And then in the end of the summer, maybe I'm a little bit better on the flat, like the running goes better, but actually the climbing goes worse. So I think that's the dynamic. And and yes, the flat running feels terrible in the beginning of the, of the spring and the summer. So right. that's kind of how it plays out, I think, in the racing and... Let's get to one more uh, live question here. Kim, what you got? Yeah, question from Morgan. Just wondering if you cross-train with your schemo. Mm. Like that I call it cross-training or if I do something else in the... Yeah, I'm thinking the question in addition to to, uh, schema. Yeah, Uh, yeah. I then I would say running maybe is cross training. (laughs) I still still run through the winter. I like to run a little bit, like maybe three times a week, and uh, just uh, go for uh, small runs on the road. And uh, yeah, so uh, I I don't totally stop running. I still uh, like uh, to do some running in the winter. And how does travel play into your schedule? Because both of these sports, if you're racing in the US and Europe and across the globe, do you have to take into account large amounts of travel and like recovering from that? Or does that, do you try to stay local in in your events and maybe pick one or two international events? Uh, No, I mean, this year I've been traveling a lot and done a lot of different races and like all over. Like, I mean, it started in, in China and I, did the sky race there and I was also traveling a little bit there and so some training camps so this year I actually been around a lot different places yeah mm. and did that did, did that take extra recovery or was that exhausting I the reason I'm asking is because I just finished mm. a lot of travel and I'm finding it difficult to recover because travel just takes a lot out of you regardless it's, but you add in racing and and the additional uh, exercise that's involved in that sort of uh, schedule. Do you have to take time off from all the travel? Yeah, like, I mean, that's a little bit the problem sometimes. Usually, like, a, yeah, travel day will be a rest day, and it's not that resting. It's super nice when you actually have time right. to have a rest day at home and, uh, and do things. So, uh, but yeah, I try to like relax and, and still do stuff I like when I travel, like read a good book and, and try to do is yeah travel awesome. as good as possible <laughs> right i i let's start talking about this race on saturday because again it was this is one of the races that came and i love to follow year after year um if we're not there if we're not participating ourselves this is one of those few years that we were not there in person but the course was different this year 
I know that the elite fields, both men and women's sides, were pretty stacked. Uh, big congratulations also to Tim Frerich, who took the men's uh, title, and, and Zach Miller and Hayden Hawks and that, that whole crew. Uh, it was really cool to follow from afar. For you, did you go into this race knowing that the competition that you were running up against was some of the best? And, and did you have any... Does like did you go into it going I want to win this again I want a two peat or did you go into it just going I want to do the best that I can do and whatever that might be. I mean I think it's the both like I want to win but I mean of course if you feel you do a really good race and you you don't win it's like you have done your best like and uh, so you can never know that like you you do your best and then see. Uh, how it ends up but of course it's very fun when it's a strong field and it i mean really running with people because sometimes that's not the case if you have um, right. a race it can be spread out quite quickly and this is actually a race when you run with people in the beginning and then i li really like that yeah and it, it seemed to start off super fast did that play to your strengths or did that get you in your head at all no i think yeah i mean I, I I mean, it's fun to run fast on those dirt roads in the beginning in the oh, dark. Yeah. So I I mean, I don't mind too much that Renee took it off. And uh, I didn't want to let her go either because I didn't know if she was going to make it the whole way. And then it's stupid to have a good, uh, big gap. So I, I kind of wanted to be up there. And uh, yeah. So and I know I can kind of handle it. if it's it's still it was fast, but it still felt comfortable. So it was like that exactly right uh, pace for uh, yeah, keep up the whole whole way. And you know this course well. I mean, you won on the course last year, so you know it decently enough. With the course change, though, did that play any role into your strategy? Did you know that you could save a little bit for those, which is, I mean, it's crazy to say, save a little bit for the last five miles of a 50 miler, but knowing that it was a bridge crossing and down into Chrissy Field and that whole long stretch of flat, did you save strength for that or did that play into your strategy at all? No, I think, I mean, the race felt pretty much the same. Like, it's not that big of a course change because, I mean, pretty much it's the same beginning. You do some dirt roads and then you, yeah, do the, the forest. And I mean, now it was the back and forth. That is quite, I mean, flat how it was last year. And now you had that a little bit more in the end. And yeah, I think like, yeah, you have a little bit flat in the end on the old course also. So yeah, it wasn't that much difference, I think. It was, yeah. This is one of those things that, Kim and I, we, we talked about this and we talked about it while we were watching the live stream of you crossing the bridge uh, that Solomon was broadcasting. Our big worry was that the bridge would be packed with tourists, which is very normal, uh, and that you would have to be dodging tourists left and right. The video made it seem like I was getting mad watching you. <laughs> I just like, I felt so bad for you having to every once in a while dodge people and people weren't really paying attention. And you know, getting that left turn off the end of the bridge and down into Chrissy was crucial. Am I crazy for being mad or were you mad or was it easy for you? Or what was it like actually in person running through the crowds? Actually, I expected it way worse. I didn't think it was bad at all. Like it was huh. quite easy to to go through people. And I mean, you're coming in a way um, higher pace and you can kind of navigate them. No, I thought it was going to be more packed actually. So. Uh, I expected it to be bad, so I was, I think, yeah. <laughs> so it was surprisingly good. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's good, because like, that's my one expectation. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be the worst. It's hard enough finishing a 50-miler, but I can't imagine the last four being across the most visited tourist destination <laughs> in San Francisco. But uh, that's great to hear that it was okay for you. Uh, Jesse in the chat room made a good yeah. point. She goes, she may have gotten good practice dodging people in the canyon. Oh, yeah. did you, That's a great comparison, uh, Jesse. Did you run into tourists while you were in the canyon or hikers? I don't want to call them tourists in the canyon because most of them are hikers or people right. that are experienced. But did you run into the similar situation coming back up to the south room? Uh, yeah, sometimes, but it's just to like, okay, excuse me, I'm here. And I mean, people think it's cool you're coming there running. So I think, yeah. Everyone is super nice, so no, it's not really a problem. Uh, those of you who are watching live, if you have questions for Ida, please jump into the chat room. Um, do you have any that you pulled aside there, Kim? Uh, yeah, there's another question from Jesse in the chat room. Uh, Jesse asks, how, how big a role did strategy play in this race? Uh, Jesse says, you ran just behind Renee for a long time. When did you pull away? 
it was actually after seeing some beach and yeah it was i was a little bit surprised because um yeah it, it, we were chatting i felt like he was uh, in good shape also and uh wasn't very tired so but then after the aid station and then the climb up from to the cardiac aid station right. I, I was just uh yeah got a big gap kind of straight away that is one of uh, at least my favorite parts is the single track down into stinson and then the climb back out i i say it's my favorite it's also pretty brutal because it comes just a little bit past halfway <laughs> so that's when you pulled away did at that point did you have any worry i mean you also have people like claire gallagher and you have all these incredible female athletes that were chasing you down at that point so did you have any worry or were you getting any intel from other teammates or anything like that as far as who was behind you how far the gaps were anything like that no actually i i didn't get any um, yeah it, because it's really hard for people to know like someone is at one aid station and then another one it's an, and i think also the connection is quite bad at many places out there so oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the problem like yeah i actually didn't know that she was quite close at muri beach and then so um, i mean you you, you you just run and try to do your best and hold on <laughs> and run a bit scared when you are in, in the lead so do you that's how it is yeah, did you, this is what I love asking elites and people who are at your level, um, did you ever hit any lows? Because I'm, I'm looking at, you know, as a spectator and a fan of the sport, I watch this performance, I'm like, man, it doesn't seem like you ever hit a wall, you ever hit any sort of low points. Did you? And what were they like? And how did you get through them? No, it was never like super bad. Like, I, I was way worse last year. Like this year, um, I felt under control, of course, it's like getting painful in the end, especially this downhill down to like the Tennessee Valley. I all, it's terrible to go on a, that dirt road kind of, yes, yeah. <laughs> trying to go fast down. And uh, I think that's the, the most painful part, but uh, no, I mean, it, it felt okay. I felt like, okay, I, I can do this and uh, yeah. What, what was your favorite part? What, what is uh, one of the things that you'll take away from this race that's maybe different from the previous year? Um, I don't know. I felt a little bit... Um, I always really like to run in the, in the forest. That's mm -hmm. my favorite part, actually. Um, yeah, coming down from uh, between Cardiac and Moor Beach, I think it's a nice part. And... No, I don't know. It was, uh, it felt uh, a little bit the same. Like I enjoyed the beginning also to have the darkness and some people around and yeah. and go fast. And uh, and I, I enjoyed last year also. I felt good at that point. So, yeah. We, we have, uh, again, a lot of live viewers who are super curious. Let's get one of these questions here from, from the live audience. Yeah, question from Morgan. Uh, what does your race day nutrition look like? Uh, uh, what I eat during the race, or yeah, yes. um, yeah, yeah. I actually just eat a lot of sugar. I I will have like some gels and sports drinks, and uh, this time I actually tried to do some own like banana um, kind of uh, gel. Like I just put some bananas and a little bit of honey and almond milk, and I kind of switched it up with that. So I didn't have so many gales. I have like four gales or something, and then I had that and some sports drinks. So that was good. I don't, I tend to like sometimes like, oh, maybe I should have a small piece of a bar or something, but especially a race like this, when you run fast, like it's, you can't really chew any time. So it's really nice to have this quick, just sugar and then keep running. Yeah, I'm, I'm always so fascinated by people who go as fast as you go on these sort of events where your your body just turns into a furnace like right. you just got to throw calories and sugar at it and let it let it just burn itself but i can i can't imagine chewing like i can't imagine running the, as fast as you guys are running and chewing and trying to swallow a whole bite i'm fascinated by that i think it's i think it's hilarious so was that the same for the grand canyon did you do nutrition very simple like what you could just carry uh during the grand canyon crossing yeah, they, I mean, it's really short. It's like, you know, three hours, 20 minutes. So it's, I mean, it's just a, a long run. So it's, I mean, you have some water and uh, I put some electrolytes in the water uh, when I run down and I mean, you're fine. It, it, it's like, a, yeah, it's a normal long run kind of. Yeah, and you weren't dealing with heat this year at all, right? 
No, it was super nice actually because we did it late. So I mean, it never got too warm down there. So it's good. And what do you prefer as far as since you've trained in Arizona, you've trained in Flagstaff, you went to NAU, uh, you also live, I believe, you live currently in Sweden. Do you have a preference of where you like to train or where you like to uh, run more? Yeah, actually, I live in Norway now. So Norway, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's really different. Like, yeah, I, I really like blo both places. Like, uh, Norway is so cool because it's all this stuff I never did before, like more scrambling and like steep mountains and more technical and mm. and things I want to learn and be better at. And, but then Flagstaff is, I said, like, even though it's so many years since I lived there, uh, when I came back, like in one day, I feel like, oh, this is a great place again. So uh, I like both places very much and you can do a little bit different training and uh, you get good in both ways also like you. So, nice. Yeah, I, I think that you're, you're able to get kind of the best of both worlds. You get high desert, runnable stuff. There's technical stuff in Flagstaff in Arizona, of course, but you also get the international, uh, the European super technical mountains, big mountains. Uh, so I guess I'm really curious. I, I know that we have to let you go, but uh, if you are watching live and you have a last minute question for Ida, please jump into the chat room, let us know. We'll try to get to it before we have to let her go. But what's next? So are, you're in Hawaii, which is great. You deserve it. You deserve to just <laughs> relax and enjoy the sunshine. Are you planning any races for the rest of the year? Do you have any races that you have your eyes set on for next year? Or are you going to be racing Schemo in the in-between? Yes, there will be some Schemo. So uh, now I stay here until the end of the week. And then I, I go back to Norway and then I start skiing. So nice. I will start with the training camp. And it won't be any more races this year. Like no running, nor not in Schemo. But then it starts in end of January. I will do uh some of the world cups and also the european championships and uh, also stage race piera menta this year so that's uh, what i plan for the winter that'll be fun to follow along uh from afar that's fantastic and racing running wise next year will we see you back in the states for anything are you traveling international Are you going back to transvolcania or any of those kind of races yeah i think i will start with the uh, transvolcania again so that will be nice and uh, yeah we'll see i hope i can finish with the uh, north face 50 again so and then uh, yeah we'll see what i do in between there <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, you have quite a few options yeah. uh there's, yeah. there's just a couple across the earth that you will be able to uh to jump into well i know i know that we again have to let you go it was awesome to have you on the show Ida, and a huge congratulations for again your second win at the north face yes. 50 mile amongst just an incredible field uh you, you crushed it uh so big congratulations to you Thank you very much. Thanks we, for having me. Yeah, before we let you go, we do have a tradition with first time guests on the show. We get a lot of flack when we don't do it. So uh, if you have like okay. 10 seconds, it's called the quickie question quiz. Yeah. I rapid fire okay. questions at you. They're very easy. Just come up with the first answer that comes to your yeah. mind. Give me a thumbs okay. up when you're ready to go and we'll start. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, what was your very first race? Uh, a race in Kalma, my hometown. I was five years old. Uh, Stans. Um... Uh, I can't. Ungdomsterrengen. Favorite yeah. place to run? <sighs> no, too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Full pass. I can't say. Yeah. Tra trail running or schemo? Trail running. Bucket list race? <sighs> pass. <laughs> <laughs> I, this one might be an interesting answer, but do you have a guilty pleasure television show? Sorry, now you disappear. What did you? Oh, do you have a one guilt... more time? You just yeah. disappear. Can you hear me? Yeah, now. Okay, guilty pleasure TV show. I don't really watch TV shows, but now I started to watch Orange Is the New Black, and it was good actually. I started watch that one. It was Perfect. Good. That's a good one. Uh, what What is your pre race meal? Uh, whatever they have, what is good. <laughs> What's the first thing that you ate or consumed after the North Face 50 miler? Um, it was some kind of bar Jim gave me. I, I, I don't really know what it was. It was like a, a piece of something. <laughs> if Walmsley hands you a bar, uh, you just gotta eat it. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, what are your current running kicks? Your running shoes? 
Um, okay, now it's again a bit disappeared. Yeah, Sorry, my you... current running shoes. Yes. Yeah, it's a pair of sense. Like uh, I like a prototype of sense. I really like. Nice. That's it. You win. Yay. You succeeded. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Ida. Uh, yeah. So, Ida Nielsen, congratulations on North Face Fifty Miler Championship two years in a row. Uh, thank you for joining thank us. You. Enjoy your Hawaiian <laughs> vacation. You earned it. Uh, so go yeah. go enjoy. We really appreciate you, uh, you you stopping by. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You got thanks. it. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. So we'll bye let bye. Uh, we'll let Ida just go ahead and hang up Ida whenever you want, and uh, we'll continue the show before we yeah before we wrap up and go into the post show yeah. here. Um, it was awesome to have her on. She's badass. She's such a good runner. Oh, and, uh, yeah, it is oh. still on. We'll, we'll just go ahead and hang okay, up. Okay, now I'm here. Both. You can go ahead and just click the hang up. <laughs> I think you can hear me. I'm not sure. Ida, just hang up your phone. <laughs> Can you disconnect? Yeah, I can. I don't want to boot her off. Too bad, but I'll eject her. Sorry, Ida. Okay, I had to eject Ida. Yeah, I don't want to keep her on the phone. I know that she's been. Uh, she was like, "I'm so worried. Uh, I have to go at 6:40." I was like, "We'll we'll make sure that happens." And we we actually helped. Oh, perfect timing. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Uh, so it, it was awesome to have her on. She is one of those international athletes. Like, I try hard to get international athletes on the show. It's difficult because time zones play a huge role. Yeah. I try to keep to a to a strict schedule. Obviously, this week was a little bit bonkers, um, but I do try to stick to some. Oh yeah, good point. Uh, <laughs> I try to stick to a schedule. Mondays at six p.m. Pacific Standard Time, but it's really difficult uh, to get international runners on. So it was one of the first ones. I was like, I wonder if we can get her. And she just well, yesterday she was traveling and yeah, so we managed to, to make it happen. And I just I can't thank her enough for for the time. Um, just being able to interview her for 35, 40 minutes was great. This go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say she has an impressive resume too. Yeah, <laughs> she's only been ultra running for a few years now, but it's it's just all first place. Um, basically, ultra first, first, ultra Vasan ninety k Transvolcania <laughs> run the rut uh, North Face fifty Transvolcania again ultra Vasan. Ultra Vassen, I think it's in it's in Sweden, but Sweden, I'm yeah. probably pronouncing that wrong as well. Uh, I wanted to take the last few minutes of the show before we move into the post show. Uh, it'll be Kim and I doing the post show with you Patreon supporters, but I wanted to take a couple minutes here towards the end of the show because it is Thanksgiving week. Uh, it is a great opportunity for us to thank people and to thank you, the viewers. Um, it's been 189 episodes that we've been doing this. We're almost at 200. That's we're nearly at four years of doing Ginger Runner Live, which is pretty crazy to think about. Uh, and it's been a joy. And I'm not I'm making it sound like, oh, this is the last episode. This is, this is the last episode. No. no. Uh, but it, it's something that uh, wouldn't be able to happen week after week only because, you know, we're, we're basically able to do this full time because of viewers because of people just watching the videos and have been watching it since I started in 2011, but also people who support on Patreon, whether you are a long-term Patreon supporter, maybe you jumped in for a month, maybe you jumped out, doesn't matter. Uh, so I wanted to take the time to thank you for tuning in Mondays. We have a great community here that jumps in every Monday, some cases Tuesday, uh, <laughs> or some cases, what was the last one we did that was way different? Was that a Wednesday? Yeah, it was something. It was recent. But it was a it was weird day of the week. I felt schedule, totally, I yeah, it was because of tour, but and Halloween yeah. uh, and Halloween. So, just those of you who come back week after week, even if you don't jump into, the, I, there's a lot of people that have written me emails saying I don't jump into the chat room because they don't have a YouTube account or they don't have a Facebook account or something mm -hmm. like that, and they just enjoy watching it, or maybe they enjoy catching up the next day or you know the next week. Uh, to those of you, thank you. Just watching and viewing uh, is support. And so every little amount of support plays a huge role in us continuing to want to make this happen, I guess is a good way of putting it as well. Those who support on Patreon, of course, that is that is what is behind the scenes that helps make this happen yeah. while we're able to sit and edit videos for four months at a time and compose music. There's a new album coming. There's new art coming. There's new gear coming. There's all these things that would not be possible without the support of people who just maybe come and watch or support on Patreon or, or anything mm -hmm. like that. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank you uh, for the continued support. It's been awesome. 
And of course, uh, because tour was very recent and Gary posted today and it uh, it's a perfect time to do that. I don't know if I really got a chance to thank everyone who came to support on tour, who came to watch the movie Where Dreams Go to Die for those who may be watching are like, what did, are you talking about? Uh, we have a new movie coming called Where Dreams Go to Die. It features Gary Robbins' two attempts at the Barclay Marathons in 2016 and 17. It was a multi-year process uh, filming and, and editing and documenting this thing. But a big thank you to everyone who came and supported of our 15 stops. Uh, we got to over 6,500 people got to view the movie, close to 7,000 people, which is pretty amazing. Um, there will be an opportunity for everyone across the globe to watch this thing. I promise. Gary and I are, well, we're recouping from the month-long tour, <laughs> uh, lack of sleep. But uh, this coming, probably after Thanksgiving, but next week, what we're planning on doing is hopefully getting our heads together and figuring out what's the next step. Um, there will be probably some sort of cool online viewing opportunity where Gary and I will do Q and A's, just like what we did on tour, right. be like an interactive experience. Uh, we hope to do that soon. So those of you who live in Europe or live in Australia or Hong Kong or uh, Southeast Asia, we've had a lot of people reach out like, how can I watch this movie? That will be how you can watch it. Uh, at least before it becomes available to the public eventually. I don't know when, but in 2018, most likely. Um, so that'll be the opportunity for everyone to watch it. Uh, but I would just like to thank everyone who came. I would like to thank uh, those who supported the movie, again, through Patreon. Uh, the movie would not have happened because I wouldn't have been able to take the time to invest in creating it because uh, that took a long time. And if I had a full-time job, it would have taken probably another four or five years to get it done. And uh, of course, I want to thank Gary Robbins for being open and patient and an incredible friend who really did open up this experience to the public. And uh, it was not an easy thing for him to do. I know that for a fact, but uh, I would like to thank him. I would also like to thank our wonderful wives, mine, Kim. <laughs> For, Your wives. <laughs> well, Gary and my, we our, our wives are like our support, our rock, and the only reason that we were really able to, to do it. So thank you, Kim. Uh, thank you, Linda. But thank you, Kim, for, for being so patient and supportive as well in the mm -hmm. tour. Uh, in my mind, I'm going, this tour is never going to work. This tour is never going to work. No one's going to want to come see the movie. And Kim's like, do it. Do it. It'll work. Do it. And it did. And it's because of that sort of positive thinking that uh, it happened. And of course, finally, uh, my best friend, Justin Sund, who's currently on his way to another state. Uh, I believe he's on a plane right now. Yeah, I think he's on an airplane right now. But a uh, big thank you to him. I hope I hope he gets a chance to see this. But uh, he is the guy that we brought on to basically organize the entire tour and made it happen. 15 stops over 24 or 5 days, something like that. And he organized all of the venues, all of the behind the scenes stuff. So big shout out to Justin Sund uh, for making that happen. He worked hard. He worked his ass off. Over 250 hours out of work went into, because uh, he built it all. <laughs> Here he like organized, he's an incredible producer. So he had all of this laid out structure and 250 hours just to organize the tour. That put, if that puts into perspective how much work went into it and the movie itself and everything, that's about that's about it, I think, because uh, I don't keep track of my hours. I have no idea. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> it's just all of the hours. So I just wanted to take that time to, to thank people. And of course, again, I, I want to thank you just for being awesome. You're welcome. And like the best wife and, and partner ever. Gus and I obviously wish we would have could have come on tour. And sure. I know Linda and Reed feel the same way. It would have been awesome if we could all go everywhere and meet everybody and, and you know, support you guys in person during the tour. But. Right. We had to Next hold time. down the fort. Yeah, you had to hold down the <laughs> fort. So I'm just, I get really excited when I get to thank so many people because it also proves that what we're doing is working. And mm -hmm. I think this is just, I say it every year, but it, it feels like it's just the beginning of something big and great. And I get really excited about that. Every year, Ginger Runner's grown a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit. It, it hasn't blown up, which I'm actually like really happy about because things are still controllable and like we're still able to produce good product, good movies, good music, good everything. And uh, I'm really excited about that. And I, I am really excited about the next step. Um, so that's going to kind of wrap up episode number 189 of Ginger Runner Live. Uh, it was great to have Ida Nilsson on. I'm excited that we finally got like a good international runner. Uh, we've had yeah. like, uh, Ryan Sands was on the show and that was like a big get. Uh, so getting people like this is, is awesome. And a big shout out to Eric Sensman, who won the JFK 50 miler. Uh, shout out to Tim Frerichs, who won the male uh, North Face 50 miler. 
uh, yeah, just like a lot happened. A lot right? happened this weekend. <laughs> What's going on this weekend. And finally, a, I posted on Facebook about this, uh, both the Patreon group and the Ginger Runner Facebook page. But there were so many people that completed their first race of what of some distance, whether it was a first trail race, first half marathon, first 5K, first 50K, first 50 miler. There were a lot of you that finished your first blank this weekend uh, or the last two weekends. There were a lot of races that happened across uh, the country and the globe. Uh, huge congratulations to you. It is pretty awesome to see people accomplish what they thought was impossible. And that is what this community is about and what's, what's awesome about it and what's, what's so great about the support system here. So thank you for, for being a part of this community and supporting those who are also a part of it and their accomplishments. And that is what's uh, pretty cool about this. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to move into the post show. If you're wondering what the post show is, every week uh, after our main show, we go do a quick post show with our Patreon supporters. Uh, the dollar level and above get access to it. So it's a dollar a month, which isn't a lot. If you Normally have... we'd have our guests joining us. but uh, Yes, tonight, tonight that... it uh, unfortunately just could not uh, hang for longer than 40 minutes. So, we... so you guys are stuck with us. You guys are stuck with us. But we're going to talk a little bit about Ginger Miss in the post show. So if you are a Patreon supporter, we'll see you guys in just a couple of seconds. If you are not, consider it patreon.com slash the ginger runner for as little as a dollar a month it just it supports everything doesn't doesn't matter what level you're at it's just awesome to have you on board so consider it if you haven't if you have we'll see you guys in a few minutes uh that's pretty much it am i forgetting anything else i think that's all all right well happy thanksgiving <laughs> to those of you who live in north america mm -hmm. canadian thanksgiving occurred <laughs> so happy post canadian thanksgiving but happy thanksgiving <laughs> to everyone that lives in the united states because this week is a big week for uh for eating <laughs> and pie uh, which both are I'm quite excited about. Get out there, train hard, race harder, and part of the hardest. I know I am. There's no post credits. There's no oh, thing yeah. because I hate that all my computers just like failed. I, I was like, it was Mercury in retrograde. Somebody so, also commented that we look like maybe we're losing our LA tans. I think it's because we couldn't change the color correction. Yeah, right. Sorry, <laughs> the color correction is it's giving us a false sense of pale. Actually, I don't is think that, no, I don't is think it? so. We might have <laughs> lost our LA tans. Yeah, because because I've definitely tanned. Never. Uh, all right, so here is our end of the show and our end credit song. Oh, I think Ingen already sang it in the chat room. Ginger runner. It's the sound that it makes. I know I am. I know I am. All right, guys, we'll see you guys. I hate having to look over at my computer over here. Never again. I hope my laptop gets fixed. I hope, so too. I hope we don't have to take out another loan. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We'll see you in the post show. Bye.